This is an ice optical glass filter. It's a 1.25 inch filter. It's designed to fit into the bottom of the telescope eyepiece. And this is IR and UV cut. So it basically lets visible light between about 400 and 700 nanometers pass. They claim 99.4% transference. And it's going to block ultraviolet light that's below 390 and infrared light that's above 700. And the use for this is to basically cut down an atmospheric haze. So I have a ultraviolet flashlight and an infrared flashlight, and I have a camera that's sensitive to those lights um, that will take one of these filters. So we're going to shine those things through this, and hopefully when we shine these through the filter, you'll see a reduction in ultraviolet and infrared light. Now, whether or not that cuts down atmospheric haze, I'll have to test separately. So I received this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, it would cost you $20. Um, I have not been paid for this review, and my opinions remain my own. All right, so in the box we have a relatively large filter holder with quite a bit of foam to cradle this small 1.25 inch filter here. Um, it has a kind of a reddish, pinkish glint to it when I hold it into the light. Um, filtering, it, it's a lot taller than most filter rings. There's a lot of extra threads on the top. Um, so here's my test eyepiece. It screws into that eyepiece just fine. It definitely will fit into your telescope. Um, so let's put this guy on my camera and take a look through it. So this is the ultraviolet flashlight. You can see that it's near ultraviolet and that it's near the optical spectrum and you can see this with your eyes, but it will cause things to fluoresce if they're ultraviolet fluorescent. Now this is the infrared illuminator and it's actually turned on. I can see very faintly tiny red dots in the center of those LEDs. This camera that you're looking through now apparently has an infrared blocking filter on it so it can't see that very well at all. All right, so I looked at these two light sources first with just the Dwarf 2 camera, and you can see that the Dwarf 2 camera is sensitive to infrared because the, there's this red tinge to the whole image. When I turn this guy on, you can really see it. You can see, you know, it, it washes everything out, um, and, you know, so the Dwarf camera is very sensitive to the infrared light, at least when the IR pass is set as the R mode. Now, with the ultraviolet light, you can still see this near infrared or near ultraviolet glow and so I don't believe that I'm properly testing the UV blocking of this filter because I think the dwarf glass already does UV blocking. Now when I put this guy on you can immediately see that the image doesn't look reddish tinted at all so this guy's definitely blocking infrared light and when I had this infrared illuminator up there you can still see red dots at the light bulbs so it's detecting a little bit but it is cut down significantly. I turned this thing all the way up and you know you could just see some red dots instead of being washed out completely. So I'll tell you for sure that this guy is definitely blocking most of the infrared light. It Okay, I have here a camera, which is an ultraviolet camera. It's only sensitive to ultraviolet light. It has a filter that blocks other types of light. And with that, I'm going to take it outside. We'll f film outside with ultraviolet light. Then I'll just manually hold this filter on top of it, and we'll get a good feel for how well this filter blocks ultraviolet light. Sorry for the shaky footage there. Um, Obviously, you can see reflections off of this guy in ultraviolet light, so as I was bringing it up to the camera, you could see the camera reflected on it. Once I put it over the lens of the camera, it blocked most of that light. There was still a faint image coming through, so, you know, just a tiny little bit of, US, of um, ultraviolet light is coming through that. But, for the most part, the light transference was cut down immensely. This guy has an auto gain, so once it gets blocked, it turns up its gain as high as it can get to try to get as much image as it can with a limited amount of light. So it's it's definitely blocking most ultraviolet light. So I'm going to go put this on a telescope and take some pictures and see if I can tell a difference between with and without. All right, so I took this filter out and I tested it on a couple of different telescopes. I have my Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope. Um, and this guy does block infrared light. It does block ultraviolet light. The infrared pass or cut filter that's in, built into my Dwarf 2 telescope actually blocks infrared light just slightly better than this guy does. 
So I tried it on my visual telescope, and there's no real point for you know visual astronomy to have one of these filters that I can find because my eyes can't see the infrared and the ultraviolet light that this guy's blocking. So I really couldn't see a difference on the moon, planets, or stars with or without this filter. Uh, the only reason I can think to have this filter is if you have an astronomy camera that's been modified to take out the IR filter. So if you have an astronomy camera that's set up to see infrared and or ultraviolet light and you want to block that so you can take a visible light photo, you could screw this on to the end of your 1.25 nose for that camera and have essentially a infrared and ultraviolet blocking filter so that your specialized astronomy camera would work like a visible light camera. So I think that's the kind of use point for this particular filter.